I first met Louise at a Christmas party a few years ago. The atmosphere was filled with fun. Sparkling lights, deafening laughter, and traditional New Year's melodies created a feeling of celebration in the air. That time we barely exchanged pleasantries. I was busy talking with my colleagues, and she stayed away, unobtrusively chatting with someone by the fireplace. But I noticed her almost immediately. Her presence stood out like light in the shadows. Louise had thick, wavy blonde hair that seemed to naturally touch her shoulders, and her blue eyes seemed to glow, reflecting the New Year's lights. Full, sensual lips occasionally lit up with a subtle smile, causing me to wonder what was hidden behind that calm expression. Her modest outfit a dark, no-frills dress emphasized her natural beauty without diverting attention to anything else. She was seductive without the slightest attempt to seduce. But that evening we did not get along, our lives only briefly intersected, and I realized that she was not the kind of girl who easily paid attention to people like me. Her calm confidence and restraint showed that she did not need to attract unwanted attention. She already knew who she was. Perhaps she immediately realized that at that time I was still that womanizer who was accustomed to easy victories. A few months later, when I met Louise again at the gym, everything changed. The simple, everyday atmosphere of the hall, the smell of sweat, the rhythm of steps on the treadmills, and the roar of heavy equipment blurred the boundaries between people. Louise had not changed in appearance, but I felt that something in her image had become different. Now she seemed more approachable, and her unattainable aura had disappeared. We crossed paths at the mirrors, and when our eyes met, her smile no longer seemed so cold. On the contrary, there was a sparkle of friendliness in her eyes, and I noticed how her hair, tied in a messy bun, emphasized her natural beauty in everyday simplicity. She did not play the role of an inaccessible princess, did not build walls of arrogance or excessive coldness around herself. Everything was easy and natural, without feigned tension or ostentatious interest. When we started communicating, our common hobbies and passions quickly brought us closer together. We both loved sports, it was more than just a hobby for us, it became the bridge that connected our different worlds. This created a special feeling of kinship, as if we had known each other for a long time. From the first moments, I realized that she was not at all frivolous. Her behavior did not betray those who were looking for fleeting, superficial connections. There was depth in her eyes, and sincerity sounded in every word. Her confidence was so natural that it was attractive. She didn't try to seem like someone else, didn't hide her interests, and wasn't shy about talking about what bothered her. She was herself, and it made a strong impression. I was especially struck by how freely and relaxed she behaved, but at the same time her behavior did not look deliberately impudent or defiant. When she suggested we go out for a beer after practice, that was the moment that took me by surprise. I did not expect such an offer, but I was pleasantly surprised by her ease, ease and lack of bias. She broke stereotypes, and her proposal was spontaneous and sincere, as if it were the most natural development of events. Our first date was surprisingly easy and relaxed, as if we had known each other for a long time. We didn't touch on complex philosophical topics, didn't pretend to be someone we weren't, and didn't try to impress each other through some kind of false gestures. Instead, they simply enjoyed each other's company, sitting in a cozy bar with soft lighting and wooden decorations, which gave the place a special, almost homely atmosphere. The bar was filled with a calm hum of conversation, but we were immersed in our own world, where only our thoughts and words mattered. Louise enthusiastically talked about her dream to become a physical education teacher. I immediately noticed how a special intonation appeared in her voice, and her eyes literally lit up when she started talking about children. It was clear that for her, sport is not just a way to keep fit, but something much more meaningful. She talked about how she wanted to inspire the younger generation, instill in them a love of an active lifestyle and develop their self-confidence through sports. Her words conveyed passion and a sincere desire to change the world for the better, even through such seemingly simple things as physical education. I, in turn, told her about my own plans about how I strive to realize my ambitions in business, how I try to find my place in the world and achieve something meaningful. We exchanged stories and thoughts, 
and there was none of the artificial awkwardness between us that so often arises in first meetings. The conversation flowed smoothly, without pauses or contrived topics, as if we had been close to each other for a long time. And when we said goodbye at the entrance to the bar, there was that light kiss that seemed to end this wonderful evening meeting. It was not a formal act of politeness, as is sometimes the case at farewell, but rather a sincere, subtle sign of nascent affection, a hint that something special had already appeared between us. This moment left me with a warm feeling like the beginning of something important and real. The next day Louise wrote to me. Her message was short, but contained a note of intimacy. Had a good evening yesterday. Maybe next time we'll have dinner instead of just a drink. Of course I agreed. Dinner went even better than I could have expected. We shared stories, laughed, and it seemed like time just flew by. I couldn't remember the last time I felt so at ease and comfortable with someone. On our third date, when we were sitting on my old, beat-up sofa in the apartment, she finally opened up. We no longer hide behind masks of politeness. We no longer play games. She looked at me confidently. Her eyes were calm, but with some depth. Listen, Johnny, she began, her voice serious but warm. You're a great guy. You have everything it takes to achieve what you want in life, and I think we both understand where this is going. I tried to play it coy, even though something sparked inside me. Is it true? I asked, so as not to look too confident. I didn't want to rush things, but I knew we were on the verge of something more than just pleasant evenings at dinner or at the gym. From that moment on, everything between us became more explicit. The thin line between friendship and something more has disappeared. Our first dates were easy and pleasant. We met in parks, small cafes, and quiet corners of the city, where we could just be ourselves. I remember how her laughter echoed through the streets, like the sounds of a distant melody, breaking free every now and then. It was light and infectious, as if it filled the air around us with sunshine, even on the grayest days. Louise always knew how to give a moment of joy. In her presence, I forgot about time, work, and problems. It was something more than just dating, it was a feeling of complete unity, as if only our little world existed around us. When we moved in together, it seemed to me that everything fell into place. Our house was cozy, modest, with a small garden in which Louise enjoyed tending the flowers in the morning. I loved watching her, in her shabby robe and disheveled hair, walk around the garden with a watering can, with a slight smile on her face. Her confidence and cheerfulness, which she showed even in such everyday activities, further strengthened my love for her. Louise truly was the woman one could dream of. Her sense of humor and ease of communication attracted people like a magnet. She knew how to make even the most difficult moments of our lives less difficult, turning everything into a joke. This was one of the key qualities I liked most about her, her ability to laugh, even when there were clouds on the horizon. Her job as a physical education teacher suited her perfectly. Her energy seemed endless, as if there was an unquenchable fire burning inside her that inspired everyone around her, including her students. Our sex life was also rich and vibrant, although it had its limitations. Louise always remained true to her principles. She did not want to do anything that could humiliate her or make her feel uncomfortable, and I respected that. In her eyes, which shone with happiness when we were together, I saw confidence. For her, intimate moments were something important and deep, and she didn't want them to lose that specialness. Even despite my secret desires, I never wanted to hurt her or make her feel less than she was. However, each of us has our own secret thoughts, our own fantasies that appear and slip away, remaining somewhere deep inside us. So it was with me. During the four years of our marriage, I could not get rid of one thought the desire to see her with another man. It was something strange, almost absurd at first glance, but this fantasy settled in me and reminded me of itself from time to time. I never talked about this with anyone, not even Louise. This was my little, dark secret that I locked away in the very depths of my mind. And so, when our fifth anniversary was approaching, I could not resist and shared this thought with her. My heart was pounding like never before. I knew it was a risk that she might not understand, but something inside me was pushing me to take this step. Her reaction was predictably sharp and full of incomprehension. 
She looked at me with indignation. Her face became cold as ice. Why do you want this? She asked with undisguised disappointment in her voice, and in her eyes I saw not just misunderstanding, but also resentment. Her trust seemed to be beginning to crack. I tried to explain that this was just a fantasy, that this was not what I really wanted from her. But the words only seemed to make the situation worse. Everything inside me sank when I saw her struggling to contain her emotions. I will never do this, she said firmly, her voice shaking with suppressed anger. This is not just offensive to me, it is a betrayal of our relationship, our marriage. Do you think I'm some kind of toy? A woman who can be used for your fantasies? My body belongs to you and only you, and I will never allow another man to touch me. Her words cut like a knife, deeply and painfully. I knew I had crossed a line that should never have been crossed. At that moment, something changed, and I felt it in every cell of my body. Our short anniversary vacation, which was supposed to be a joyful event, seemed to be under the shadow of something invisible. We left the city, rented a cozy house on the lake, and from the very beginning everything looked perfect. Fresh air, secluded nature, a cool breeze that gently swayed the curtains in the living room. But it was as if an invisible barrier had settled in our relationship. Louise was nearby, but seemed distant. We could always talk about everything, and I hoped that this time everything would be resolved simply through an honest conversation. We were eating dinner on the terrace, enjoying a simple grilled meal, when the silence between us became oppressive. Her smile was weak, her glances were shifting, as if her thoughts were wandering somewhere far away, outside of this small house, outside of our relationship and I couldn't get rid of the feeling that everything was to blame for my confession. My stupid fantasy, which seemed to stir up something in her, something deep and unconscious. When Friday evening came, we had sex, but it wasn't the same as before. I felt her touch, her warmth, but her soul was somewhere far away, outside this room. I lay next to her afterwards, watching the TV light cast flickering shadows on her face, and I couldn't stand it. What's happened? I asked quietly, trying not to alarm her, but with every word I felt the tension in my voice growing. We could always discuss any problem, and I hoped that she would open up and tell her what was going on. Louise was silent for a long time, without taking her eyes off the screen, as if collecting her thoughts before answering. Finally, her voice sounded quiet, almost indifferent. Nothing, Johnny. Everything is fine. Just fine, she replied but her words didn't carry the confidence I was expecting. She spoke as if convincing not me, but herself. I sighed, but before I could say anything, she continued. This is your stupid fantasy. I don't like it, but when we have sex, it plays over and over in my head. I can't get rid of these thoughts. They're just distracting me. Her voice became a little louder, but still sounded distant, as if she was talking not about herself, but about some stranger. Everything inside me tightened. I knew it was my fault. I started this conversation, allowing this idea to permeate our relationship. Damn it, Louise, let's just leave it at that, I started, trying to get us back into the same harmony. I love you and I want us to be together. We don't need to discuss this again, and I certainly don't want it to cause you any trouble. But her look changed. A strange sparkle appeared in her eyes, and a thoughtful expression appeared on her face. She clearly wasn't going to let this conversation go so easily. Well, she said slowly, and I felt the tension between us. You already said this, and I think you don't really want to forget it. But what exactly is it about this fantasy that excites you so much? It's not just about humiliation or calling your wife a woman of easy virtue. Do you really want me to be with another man? Her words sounded cold, almost mechanical, but I felt that emotions were boiling inside her. I swallowed, feeling my throat go dry. How can I explain it to her? How to express what seems so wild even to me? Well, I began, choosing my words carefully. Listen, Louise, such fantasies, they are strange, they are complex. One idea is that the wife's body belongs to her husband, so the thought of another man being able to feel what I feel is a little exciting that another man will be able to know what his dear wife feels like. 
She listened attentively, without interrupting, and I continued, although each word was becoming more and more difficult for me. As we already discussed, humiliation and pain also turn me on. Pain, insult. All this seems implausible, but at the same time incredibly. Exciting. You said that such fantasies are dirty and uncouth. It's true, and I don't deny it. But I'm a man. We men sometimes find excitement in the most ridiculous and strange things. This doesn't make sense. It would be the greatest insult to nature itself, but that's why the thought seems so tempting. I exhaled, feeling the tension in the room rise. This all sounds like I'm obsessed, but that's not true. These are just fantasies. Sometimes I like to imagine that you are doing what you should do only with me, with some stranger. Even if you do something you don't want to do to me. Louise was silent for a while, her gaze directed into emptiness, but then she finally spoke. I think I understand. I think it's a fantasy. It's normal. Probably, she thought, as if trying my words on herself. But doing something like that in real life would be crazy. Another person would get to know me. Intimately. What if we regret it? What if it ruins our happiness? When we are completely and completely given to each other in bed, nothing can compare with this. Why do you want me to experience this with another man? Would some stranger invade our home? This seems like a stupid idea. Her words echoed in my head, causing a strange feeling of anxiety. On the one hand, I knew she was right. On the other hand, these fantasies, this darkness that I carried inside, still pulled me towards it. But at that moment I realized, no matter what was happening in my head, reality was more important. Reality was something we had been building for years, and to destroy it for the sake of momentary excitement would be stupid. Me too, but the thought of it is like a constant hidden idea that I can't quite get rid of, I replied. But this is just a fantasy. Nothing is more important than us and our marriage. Let's not worry about it anymore. Louise was silent for a moment before nodding. I hoped that we could forget about this stupid fantasy and move on. I knew that she was a devoted wife, and she would be tormented by the thought that I had desires that we could not do anything about. But that's life. Maybe one day I'll make some of your wishes come true. But not this, Louise assured. As your wife, I want to satisfy your sexual needs but this desire is too deep. I would almost prefer it if you just wanted to add some girl to the two of us. Hey, I wouldn't mind that either, I chuckled, trying to diffuse the situation. Whatever is comfortable for you, I'm already a happy person. A week later, everything was back to normal. Louise became a little more playful, more willing to show her more adventurous side, and showed more interest in sex. This has been a game changer in the bedroom. See, a little variety can be fun, I breathed. You're right, mister, Louise breathed in response. But everything seemed normal, and I didn't see the need to think about it any further. On Saturday morning, we enjoyed a cup of coffee on the veranda. Louise was in a thoughtful mood and looked somewhere into the distance, as if she was remembering something. Johnny, about that idea, I've been thinking, she began. I didn't answer because I didn't know what to expect. This was the second time she had brought up the topic herself. How do people even come to this? How did this come about for you? Asked Louise. I'm just trying to figure it out. Some men want to add a third person, some want something else, but your fantasy is so strange. What do you get out of it? Oh, I think I just find it arousing for no real reason. Sometimes people have fetishes that are hard to explain. I replied. It's like something forbidden. Doing something you're not supposed to do. It's an absolute taboo. Yeah, but, well, did you watch the video or something? Is that how you discovered this topic? Asked Louise. No, not really. Well, at first, yes, but now I don't need it. You are more than enough for me. I think I was reading stories and kind of got into it, I replied trying to remain calm, even though inside my heart was racing with excitement about where this conversation might lead. Hmm, Louise replied thoughtfully. I'm not saying I'm interested in this, because I'm not, and you shouldn't be interested in it either, but do you imagine that this could actually happen? I'm not suggesting this, I'm just curious. These words sank my heart. 
The thought of my proud wife considering being desecrated by something so absurd gave me mixed emotions ranging from fear to excitement. I was even afraid to answer if she actually considered this as a possibility. Um, yes, maybe, if you were ever okay with it and could enjoy it, then yes, I would want you to do it. But you're not interested, right? I wanted to give her every possible way out, but the fact that she asked it herself was already a huge step forward. Well, Louise looked away. I think you know the answer to this question. I would never do it just like that. But perhaps under some special circumstances. I'm not sure. I don't want to hurt you. But I also want to be able to perform your oddities or whatever else you call it. There is no pressure on you. It's just a thing I think about sometimes, I said, feeling a little unsure of what I really wanted to hear from her. But as your wife, I want to satisfy your desires, even if they are a little. Strange, Louise said. You already do this, and you know how to do it, I said, and our eyes met. A warm silence hung between us. When do you think about it? asked Louise. Usually admitting that you're distracted while having sex with someone else isn't a good idea, but I wanted to be honest. When I read, mostly, but sometimes, when we make love, I replied, trailing off on the last words. Louise did not answer immediately. She sat back down as if she was considering what I had said. It's just, that thought is still running through my head, Louise finally said. I'm not turned on by the idea of another guy touching me, but if you watch, and if it's safe, then maybe, maybe, maybe if it's a special occasion, I'm not sure. You can't rush these things. They have consequences, she finished. She could be very sensual when she was in the mood. Thank you for your honesty, was all I could say. And thank you for thinking so much about it. Well, I care about you. We're about to enter our thirties, and I want us to have a full life together, including in the bedroom, Louise explained. So who would be the ideal partner? In the stories you read, what are these men usually like? Usually, in 90% of stories, the so-called bull is some kind of Apollo, an ideal handsome man, something so cliched. But honestly, I like it much better when it's some guy who you're clearly not right for. Like some fat guy or bore, I explained. What? Seriously? Would you want me to sleep with someone you don't even like? Louise asked, slightly taken aback. In fictional stories, these guys aren't real, I began. But yes, there is something sexy about it when your wife, such a beauty, sleeps with this, well, freak. A beauty from a prosperous family, the daughter of a policeman, with some loser or fat man. But no, it's not you. They're just characters from stories I read. It's just a fantasy, I assured. But you want it to become a reality, don't you? Asked Luis. It's dangerous to admit, but I think so, I replied. You are so correct, so sexy and beautiful both externally and internally. Louise smiled at these words, and the thought that someone is defiling you is the wrong word. I realized that I had started talking nonsense and immediately fell silent. Maybe I'll think about it, if it makes you happy, Louise said, giving me an encouraging smile. You shouldn't keep such thoughts to yourself, Johnny. This is completely normal, despite what society may think about it. Let's agree that we won't rush anywhere. Now we both know it exists, okay? Okay. Yes. You're right, I said, slowly coming back to reality. I noticed the sun appear behind the curtains. This was probably one of the last warm days before the onset of autumn. As much as I would like to continue this conversation, we had a life, and when it comes to any fetishes in sex, you need to tread carefully and do it together. Leaving this issue unresolved for now was probably the right decision. Let's not ruin such a good day by discussing such dirty things, I said with a slight smile. By the way, today is a big neighborhood event. Let's not worry about it and just enjoy the rest of the day. Louise smiled and seemed to breathe a sigh of relief, perhaps because we were no longer discussing the topic or because I had taken the whole situation so calmly. Later we got ready and went to the neighbor's house. It was a big house and the whole street was gathered outside. It was a pleasant, sunny day, the mood was high. 
we headed to the backyard where there was a huge grill and a long table laden with a variety of food. People milled around, chatting and eating. The owners were an elderly couple, Mrs. Anderson and her husband. She was a very pleasant woman, and he was a cheerful and sociable person. They moved here a few years ago and have always been the life of the party. We grabbed some food and started talking to people. Louise went to her friends, and I went to mine. We did this a lot at parties. We'd separate for a bit to socialize with others and then meet up again. The neighbors were friendly, and although there were a few new faces, most of them were familiar to me. Even a few students from the neighborhood came to the event, including Lana and Mary, two girls who lived a few houses away from us. An hour later, I noticed Louise at the other end of the yard. She was talking to a young guy. I knew him. He lived across the street, but we didn't know each other personally. He wasn't a particularly attractive guy. He was quite plump and not too muscular, rather a little chubby. His face was simple, and his black hair stuck out carelessly in different directions. Looks more like an ogre than a guy. The conversation didn't seem suspicious, but that didn't stop my imagination from running wild. I may have been a little tipsy and a little horny, but I decided to leave them alone and headed to the bathroom. The house was large, and there was also a bathroom upstairs. I walked towards the stairs and glanced casually into the living room. Through the large panoramic window opening, I saw Louise and this guy. She kept her distance and was polite, but I couldn't stop imagining that she might do something indecent to him, especially after our conversation earlier. My heart started pounding and my mouth went dry. I imagined him having sex with her. No, 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 stop thinking about it, I muttered. You are married and your wife is a goddess. I don't want her to sleep with some idiot or with anyone at all. It's just a stupid fantasy, nothing more. Forget it. Standing there, watching them talk, I suddenly saw the guy lean over and whisper something in her ear. Louise looked shocked, and I couldn't tell if the reaction was positive or negative. She laughed awkwardly and answered something. The guy whispered something again, and this time her face turned red, but she was no longer laughing. Her face became serious. Damn it. I thought, and felt my body begin to react to my fantasies. What are you doing, Johnny? I asked myself. I tried to take my eyes off what was happening. Louise suddenly raised her head, as if sensing that I was looking at her. She smiled at me, and the guy nodded before turning away. Louise waved at me and disappeared from sight. Damn, is this really happening? I thought. I'm going crazy. She would never do this. She's the perfect wife, and this guy is a loser. She would never do this. Never. Even for my sake. My heart was pounding and my hands were shaking. I knew I needed to talk to her. Just calm down and pull yourself together, I told myself. As I walked into the upstairs bathroom, I took several deep breaths. After I washed my face with cold water, I felt calmer, almost reasonable. I'm a happily married man, we have a great relationship, I repeated to myself. We're just playing with ideas, it doesn't mean anything. Feeling a little calmer, I left the bathroom and went downstairs. Oh, Johnny darling, said a voice behind me. Could you help me with the plates? I turned around and saw Mrs. Anderson carrying a stack of dirty dishes. Of course, I replied. Let me take them. But in the back of my mind... Every moment I spent away was a time in which Louise might be seduced. Did I say that I had calmed down and become more reasonable? Apparently not. I was just as excited as before. As we headed into the kitchen, Mrs. Anderson continued, Your wife, Louise, is such a good girl. So beautiful and smart. Who is she like? Thank you. I think it all comes from her mother, who was also a smart woman. That's good to hear, I replied trying not to look too awkward. You seem a little tense, Mrs. Anderson noted. Everything is fine. Yes, everything is fine, I replied as we put the dishes in the sink. Just a little nervous about something. It's none of my business, but don't be afraid to talk to her, Johnny, whatever it is, the older woman said. You have been a wonderful couple for many years, and you are still so young. You have many, many years ahead of you together. Don't be afraid to enjoy life. 
thank you, Mrs. Anderson, but we're fine, I replied, smiling at her. Don't be afraid, she said. She is your wife and you love her. Nothing can destroy this. I didn't understand what she was talking about and I certainly didn't want to ask, so I said goodbye and headed back to the backyard. When I came out, Louise was nowhere to be found. She was not with her friends, did not communicate with anyone. I slowly walked around the yard, but she was nowhere to be seen. She disappeared. What's happening? Has she left? Did the guy leave with her? My heart was pounding, my pulse was beating in my temples. I was ready to go crazy. Just as my anxiety was peaking, Louise suddenly appeared. She looked slightly worried, but nothing unusual happened. Hey honey, what's wrong? Louise asked, her face turning a little red. Was it because of the red wine or something else? Where have you been? I was looking for you, I said. I was inside talking to friends, then Lana wanted to talk about the local college. Louise replied, I didn't know you were looking for me, sorry. Everything is fine. Are you okay? I asked. Yes, I'm fine. Why do you keep asking about this? Do I look weird or what? Louise laughed. I just saw you talking to some guy from next door, and he whispered something to you, and then you blushed, I said, a little confusedly. Oh, that, she smiled. Don't worry, it's nothing important. What did he say? I insisted. That's just stupidity, she replied, slightly embarrassed. Go ahead, talk, it's not a problem, I insisted. I won't be angry. Okay, he just said that he liked my dress and that I was hot. I didn't expect this, so I was embarrassed. That's it. There's nothing to worry about, she smiled. Oh, I see. Just wanted to make sure. I thought maybe you left him or something. Why would I do this? replied Louise. I'm happy with my man. And I'm pleased with you, I answered, and there was a short pause between us. You, would you really want me to leave with him? Have you thought about this? Don't feel guilty. I know we talked about your fantasy earlier, Louise said, showing her understanding. No, no, not at all like that. Well, part of me thinks it would be fun, but I'm not serious. It's just a stupid idea, I replied. Oh, okay, I wouldn't go anywhere with him, and not with anyone else at all. You are the only man for me, she said, hugging me. I'm going to the toilet and will be back soon. Better use the one above. The toilet downstairs doesn't flush well, I said and went back to the rest of the company. I was happy. Perhaps the alcohol was starting to take effect, or the fact that she was so understanding of my wishes began to calm me down. She was perfect. When she walked away, I saw the same guy at the barbecue. Damn, he's like a dog sniffing out prey, I thought. As soon as he saw me looking at him, he decided to come over. Hey, Mr. Banks, he said. You don't remember me, do you? Um, not really, sorry, I replied. You live nearby, right? Or across the road? Maybe it's the alcohol, but I often see you and Louise together, and I have to say, you're lucky. She's so beautiful, man. Is this a dress? Wow, thank you, was all I could say. I wasn't usually this introverted, but being around the guy I had just fantasized about wasn't easy. I'm glad she's with you, because if she wasn't, I would definitely try to woo her. She's fire, bro, he continued, patting me on the back. I realized that he was slightly drunk, and perhaps his judgment was no longer entirely adequate. I didn't answer. It seemed like he was trying to gauge my reaction to understand how I would react to this. Where did he get such confidence to talk to me like that? After all, he was quite a few years younger, and we were strangers. Yes, we are fine. What's your name, by the way? It's not good to forget names. I tried to change the topic. Tony, the guy grinned, slapping me on the back again. Johnny, huh? That's right, I replied. Dude, she has such a figure. It's noticeable right away. And her ass. Wow, she's just sweet. And again, talking about my wife. It's like I'm not here. I decided to laugh to smooth things over. The guy had clearly had too much to drink. I had nothing to be angry about. I forced myself to grin and stood up. I'll go check on my wife, I smiled. See you. 
Tony grinned and waved his hand. He looked pleased. It was a strange conversation, and it seemed to me that he was glad that I didn't get angry and go beat him. My heart was pounding, my blood was boiling, and my hands were icy. It was crazy. This was all going too far, at least in my imagination. I kept seeing Tony and Louise together, how this guy takes what should belong to me, how this impudent man claims the main prize. Louise was too sensible to agree to this, but of course my heart, pulse, and excitement said otherwise. I went to get some water, and when I came back I saw Tony talking to my wife again. He looked too pleased with himself and confident in his actions. This guy seemed to have gained some confidence, and I didn't understand where this loser got so much impudence from. Tony continued to smirk at Louise, who kept a neutral expression with her arms crossed over her chest. He whispered something to her again, speaking so quietly that I could not hear. She sighed and, to my surprise, shook her head slightly. Tony immediately took this as his cue to continue. I could see him moving closer, continuing to court her. His hand had already touched the belt on his pants. She glanced around to make sure no one was seeing them and sighed again. My heart was pounding. What was he saying? What did he offer her? It looked like he wanted to go too far. My imagination was picturing all sorts of scenes, and I couldn't stop myself imagining this guy trying to do something to my wife. But suddenly Louise turned abruptly and walked away from him, leaving him standing alone with a grin on his face. Her face was red, but clearly from irritation. I breathed a sigh of relief. Hey Johnny, when are you going to give me a chance, huh? Tony shouted, obviously thinking his words were funny. Louise turned in his direction and gave him the middle finger, causing a small laugh from those who noticed the gesture. I smiled at her as she approached me. She didn't need to ask questions, she immediately began to express her irritation. Listen Johnny, that damn idiot Tony, what kind of a person, tell me. He's clearly drunk, but how can he talk to women like that? With me, he had tried to flirt with me before, telling me how beautiful I was, but now it was pure dirt. Then he offered to show me his. Well, you understand. I told him no. You saw for yourself how it ended. I stood listening to her, nodding, not knowing what to say. The little devil inside me was telling me to enjoy this moment, especially since she was more angry than upset. Wow, Louise, I finally said. It looks like he got really drunk to act like that. What's wrong with this guy? Louise said indignantly. So aggressive, so nasty. He doesn't understand when to stop. Why aren't you angry? She suddenly interrupted herself, noticing my slightly mocking expression. I may have been a little shocked by everything that was happening, but the situation seemed almost unreal to me. Johnny, this is not funny. What's wrong with you? Louise playfully slapped me on the shoulder, although her irritation had subsided a little. Sorry, sorry. I'm just a little surprised, that's all. Wow. Looks like the guy drank too much. I tried to justify myself. Yes, these things happen, but it's just terrible. These young people think that the whole world belongs to them, or something like that. Incredible. I told him, no but he still tried to show his dignity. It's just crazy, Louise sighed. Are you okay? Didn't he do anything wrong? I asked, trying to calm her down. Yes, everything is fine, but Tony is just crazy. And he said such vulgar things. He tried to lure me somewhere, saying how sexy I was, how he wanted to see me naked and all that. Disgusting guy, Louise shook her head, more annoyed than angry. It looks like you've been talking about this for too long. I mimicked her with a grin, knowing that she wouldn't like it. It's not funny, Johnny, not funny at all, Louise repeated. But when she looked at me, I saw that she might even have liked that I took the incident so calmly. Look, he's just a stupid guy. You don't have to worry about it anymore, I said, holding her hands. Was this a good time to continue the conversation? Maybe I could tease her a little. So you saw him? Louise slapped me on the shoulder with a smile, looking at me slightly embarrassed. Johnny, he wanted to show me, but I told him no and left. You saw everything yourself. Of course, I didn't see him. Still, would you like to watch? Egged on I. What? 
Louise gasped, opening her eyes wide. Why would I look at his, his thing? I don't know. You seemed quite intrigued when he suggested it. I even blushed a little, I chuckled. Maybe some small part of you was interested after all. God, you know I'm not interested in anyone's stuff but yours, Louise blushed. I'm not some woman of easy virtue who sleeps with just anyone, especially with someone like him. I know, honey, I reassured her, holding her hand. I'm just kidding, but I admit the thought turns me on a little. Well, maybe I felt some slight excitement. I was a little embarrassed, Louise unexpectedly admitted, which greatly surprised me. Maybe that's why she was so angry. But no more. And just because I felt that way doesn't mean I want to sleep with him or anything like that. It's just a natural reaction, she laughed. Perhaps our conversations about fantasy earlier influenced my thoughts when he spoke to me. Sometimes these things are just natural. There's no harm in it, I winked. But at least you could have helped the guy a little, I muttered before I could think. What? Do you want me to satisfy him? Lord, have you gone completely crazy? Louise responded, looking at me stunned. I bit my tongue, realizing that I had gone too far, but the sly grin on my face never left. After a second, Louise realized what she had just said and immediately slapped my arm angrily, covering her mouth with her hands. I can't believe you even suggested that, she said indignantly. My hands belong to you, and you want to give them to someone else. What's wrong with you, Johnny? She couldn't believe her ears and tried to figure out if I was serious or just joking. As I continued to smirk, she continued, What exactly do you want me to do to him? What nonsense are you talking about? No, I want you to just look at him, I said seriously, and maybe helped him a little. Is this overkill? I understand if it's too much, but it turns you on a little, right? Absolutely not. I just thought about it because it turns you on. I would do this for you, you know? I said I would never agree to something like that, but if you wanted it that bad, maybe I could, she muttered. Wow, are you seriously considering this? I was amazed by her confession. You don't have to go to such lengths to excite me. Just your consent to this is enough to make me feel in seventh heaven. Well, if I could pluck up the courage to do it, I guess I would. But touch him? Ugh, this is so disgusting. And sharing something like that with a guy like that? Louise grinned. We are getting ahead of ourselves a little here. The guy suggested it, not me. And there's a reason I turned him down, Johnny, she purred, hugging me. Well, maybe so, but I'm glad to hear you say things like that, I replied as we hugged for a second. So are you going to find him? I asked, as if everything was decided. What, touch him? Are you crazy? Johnny, you really don't expect. Louise paused and waited as an elderly neighbor walked by. The tension was high and the couple passing by probably had no idea what we were talking about. I couldn't help but laugh. It's not funny, Johnny. It was just a question, I explained, although I felt that the moment when my fantasy would become something real was slipping away from me. That was it, even though I'm a horny idiot, I couldn't ask Louise to do that. It was too overboard, too much of an intrusion. This will violate our privacy and change the dynamics of our relationship. Perhaps it was too far. I didn't have to think much, because Louise must have noticed how my eyes were cloudy and distant. My head was swimming in some kind of fantasy, and she continued to speak in a low and solemn voice. It's possible. If only I could do it. Somewhere secluded and safe. That's all I'm saying. Are you serious? I asked. She gave me the keys and asked me to start the engine. Listen, you were the one who asked for this, and I'm serious. I'm saying I would do it for you and for us as a team, as a couple. Now you have to make it possible. Johnny, do you want me to do this to Tony? Say yes, and we'll do it. I was in such shock that it took a few seconds for my brain to realize that this could actually happen. That's it. How do you answer such a question? How the hell was I supposed to consent to my loving wife being intimate with this lout? What are you saying? I looked into Louise's beautiful, enchanting eyes. Yes, I, I want you to do this. At this point my voice was just a sigh. 
Louise's face showed mixed emotions. She was more uncertain than I'd ever seen her, but she nodded and I noticed her pulse quicken. You asked for this yourself, dear. With that, Louise stood up and went to look for Tony. I could just imagine Tony's face when Louise forced him to come over. I had to wonder how this would even happen. Will she flirt and get her to move towards him? I stood behind them and watched them closely, watching my wife's pretty ass jiggle and jiggle as she walked. When Louise found the guy in the yard, I crept a little closer, hiding behind a tree and a large trash can. Tony seemed preoccupied, but when my wife approached him, he turned his attention to her. It was obvious that she didn't quite know how to discuss this issue without making it very awkward, and it seemed like she didn't want to involve others nearby. Tony looked smug and arrogant as he examined her as best he could. Louise said something to Tony, and he grinned even wider and answered, but no one seemed alarmed or worried. I even saw Louise laugh awkwardly a few times. I could hardly believe what was unfolding before me. Tony hugged her, and they walked to the front of the house. Shit. I knew this was the final point of no return. That's it. Damn it, I muttered as Louise looked back and smiled at me, unbeknownst to Tony. Everything went faster in my head. As I was mulling over these thoughts, thinking about how great it was and what was going to happen, my legs started moving towards them. I followed them at a safe distance as they crossed the street. I stopped, unable to follow them down the driveway without being noticed. I stopped, feeling a little jealous that I couldn't watch them on their way, but I knew what was going to happen next, and the thought got me so excited. I saw Tony open the door and let Louise in, walked in and closed the door. Now my wife was left completely alone with Tony and his nefarious intentions. I couldn't handle it, so I walked up to the house without thinking about anything in particular. I guess I wanted to watch or listen. We didn't quite agree on this. Perhaps we haven't thought everything through after all. Approaching the windows, I noticed that the kitchen was dark, which meant they weren't there. I didn't want to stand outside, so that's okay. I walked around the house and noticed an open window probably his bedroom. It was quite secluded as it faced away from the street and towards a small forest. She did it. I hurried to meet my wife at the front door. Soon a slightly disheveled Louise appeared, giving me a weak smile, apparently a little giddy and dazed. Let's go home. Did you see that? Louise asked in a quiet voice. Hell yes, I answered eagerly as we headed towards our house, located diagonally from Tony's house. I didn't know you were going to watch. Louise admitted. Wait, you did all this thinking I wouldn't find out? I asked with slight surprise. That would be very treacherous. I didn't really want to, I just. It's difficult, Louise admitted. I would have told you later anyway, but now I think you know. But when did you start watching? From the very beginning, I replied. So how did it go? I asked, holding the door for her. Louise lowered her head blushed and sighed, and then went inside. I watched her carefully, waiting for an answer, and watched as she sat down on the sofa. She rubbed her forehead with her hands, sat up and straightened her back. She then looked at me and smiled warmly, showing that she still loved me and cared about me. Fine, I started. Don't play with me, darling, I whispered. Louise took a deep breath. Fine. Yes, I liked it. I shouldn't have, but I did it. This is bad, she asked with a sly smile. My jaw opened wide again. I knew this was a performance from my wife, who did all this for me. But it seemed so real. It was real. As real as it gets. It became a very vivid fantasy. I pulled Louise towards me and kissed her. I, um, oh God, did you really like it? I asked her, holding my breath. Yes, Maybe it's not so bad if we, um, you know, can I tell, if we cheat? Louise muttered. I never thought I'd ever do something so clever. But at least now we've done it. Right? Louise purred. The next morning we spent time relaxing together. Louise was in the shower and I just lay there and thought about all my fantasies. There was no shortage of materials. We didn't actually do anything, we called it a lazy Sunday, but the thought of my sexy wife doing this to a neighbor. Well, that thought is hard to resist. I was left thinking more about Tony, 
wondering what he could have done. I wouldn't say I was scared, but I was definitely scared by how brazen he was. It was obvious how much Louise enjoyed this and how willing she was to compromise any future dignity or standards of decency. I don't know. I never would have guessed it. On Monday, everything returned to normal. Nothing extraordinary happened. Perhaps the most awkward moment was seeing Tony knowing what happened. He walked to his car and drove off, so it wasn't the longest interaction, but it was awkward nonetheless. I went to work myself and saw Louise only in the evening. Guess who I saw this morning, she said, twirling her hair and smiling mischievously as I joined her on the couch. She hadn't said anything about fantasy since Saturday, but after saying that I immediately knew she was talking about Tony, my body tensed with interest, my thoughts were again filled with images. Louise leaned towards me and kissed me on the lips. You mean, I paused. Yeah, that asshole, Louise grinned. I guess I should have known by now, but of course he goes to my college. Not in my gym class, but in one of the other teachers, she said. Nothing, really. It's just weird that I can see him at any time. It's a little strange to see him acting normal and all, Louise said matter-of-factly, picking up the TV remote. So nothing happened, I asked. We didn't really talk, and besides, we have already fantasized and experienced. Well, you know. My wife blushed, changes. I felt a little fear as I realized what she was saying. So there's no reason for anything more, right? Essentially, it was what she said that she really meant. She looked at me and probably saw my reaction. Dear, I took her hands in mine. No pressure, but hearing you say it yourself that you can't stop thinking about it. Louise sighed. She then laughed nervously and looked at me, her beautiful face showing a mixture of genuine curiosity, seriousness, concern, and hope. I won't pretend I didn't. React, but there are so many problems here, Louise said. I nodded, fully aware of how unconventional this was. First, we need to establish control. Secondly, and this coincides with the first, we are in too much of a hurry. If we can establish some rules, perhaps it will help further the exploration of your idea. Remember, I'm doing this for you. I wouldn't do anything like that if you didn't insist, right? Said Louise. Absolutely, and I love you for it. I agree that rules could help, but how can we persuade him to follow them? I asked. We'll just tell him she replied and shrugged. I widened my eyes in surprise. We must give Louise her due. She was usually not so straightforward in intimate matters, but now she looked determined. She lowered her head, as if images of a new meeting with Tony began to scroll through her imagination. Do you trust him that much? I asked. We have no other choice if we want to continue this, if we're going to continue. Making you a cuckold, Louise said, adding the last part slowly. What, sorry? I asked, puzzled. We have to trust him if we want to continue cuckolding you, Louise repeated with more confidence, meeting my stunned face with a small but reassuring smile. The words my wife spoke were difficult to comprehend, but they burned me from the inside. Louise moved closer to me and kissed me tenderly on the lips and forehead. She then stood up and did a sensual turn that completely turned my mind to mush. My gaze lingered on her delicious curves. Let's go. Let's sit down at the table and discuss all this, okay? Louise suggested, taking my hands and leading me to the kitchen. I nodded. I didn't like the idea of trusting an asshole like Tony, but at the moment I couldn't think rationally about what might happen. Will he even follow the rules? I asked, sitting down. I really hope so. If he wants to see me again, he will have to respect our rules. But you're really considering it, right? I said. We could have more fun, maybe more control, and still keep it fantasy so you won't feel so awkward, I quickly added, realizing that I might sound like I wanted this regardless of her feelings or desires. The real question is, Louise began, sliding onto the edge of her chair and dangling her graceful legs in front of me, her heels swinging on her toes, can you take it? My mind was spinning with possible scenarios that could happen. Judging by her seductive tone, it seemed like she had already made up her mind. I unwittingly encouraged her to let him please her, and she already knew how well he could do it. 
Well, why not? I asked, prompting Louise to admit that she was enjoying it. I think it's only fair that you get something too. How caring you are, Louise said with a smile. Well, I've already come up with some rules, to be honest, she added in an informative tone, while remaining reserved. I realize that she likes to explore new boundaries. Louise took a sticky note and a pen to write it down. Rule number one, she said as she wrote down the rule. You have to be able to say no. You're my husband, so that's important. I swallowed. Rule number two, she continued, tearing off another sticky note. You must be able to observe. I haven't quite thought this through yet because maybe we can't always be all three of us in the same room. So I thought maybe I could record it on my phone. On my phone so that he can't do something stupid with the recording later. This is fine, Louise asked, glancing at me. Yes, I said hoarsely, feeling the growing tension. Is everything else normal? She asked, looking at me. I could only nod. Great. Now unbuckle your belt and let's make love to seal the deal, Louise said. I did as she asked. I had no idea how she could show so much energy in these matters. The usually shy but confident wife gradually began to become violent. My mind was swimming, torn between intense pleasure and anxiety. She said it was all for me, but the pleasure Tony gave her was no lie. The pleasure she was supposed to give him, but I trusted her. These rules would guarantee my inclusion, and as Louise had said many times, she wanted none of this other than to please my fancy. Trust the process. I knew I could trust Louise, but part of it was anxiety. This was the decisive moment for the fantasy to become a real reality. It seemed to me that the storm in my heart was raging so strongly that it was about to break out. That week my wife invited Tony over the following Sunday. I was nervous, not knowing if the whole setup was perfect or if we had fooled ourselves with our initial imagination. At least the rules set some boundaries on what can happen. Calm down, okay? We have already crossed a certain line, and we can jump out at any moment. So don't worry, Louise said confidently. We control everything. I'm in control. I know, I know. I can't comprehend that this is happening, that's all, I explained. Louise nodded, a smile appearing at the corners of her mouth. She came towards me and kissed my lips. Do you trust me? She asked again. I nodded without hesitation. Then let's have some fun. Louise disappeared into the kitchen. A moment later, there was a polite knock on the front door. With nervous energy coursing through my veins, I went to let Tony inside. He grinned at me as he entered the room. Super. Where is Mrs. Banks? Tony asked, walking past me. Louise. Call her Louise, I answered him. She was a teacher, so he was probably used to her last name, but the whole ordeal didn't really sit well with him on such formalities. She's in the kitchen. Without waiting, he headed to the kitchen, leaving me behind. Not wanting to waste a second, I followed him. Louise had just set the table with wine and cheese when we joined her. Hello again, Tony, Louise said. Hello, Louise, he replied. I watched them interact. Suddenly everything became real again, an amazing feeling to feel the excitement inside. Louise's lips twitched. She was excited, trying to control herself. I recognized her game. She knew what Tony could and most wanted to do to her. Damn, it was clearly written all over his face. Would you like something to drink? She asked him. Tony didn't appreciate the hospitality and sat down at the kitchen table. Look, I know I was a little cheeky at the party, Tony began, looking from Louise to me. I want to apologize. I might get a little stuck in my own shit when I go. Oh, yes, it's okay. Thanks for the apology, Louise said slowly not knowing how to react to this. It's not that you don't deserve compliments, I mean, look at you, Tony chuckled, pretending to look my wife up and down. Maybe I meant it after all, huh? Louise smiled and shook her head. I could tell she wanted to scold him, but she resisted to make my fantasy come true. Anyway, is there something you guys wanted to talk about? He asked. Louise sat down next to him, and I stepped forward a little to look at my wife, and her toy. Yes, there is, Louise began. I don't want to beat around the bush. 
Last weekend, I told John about our little discretion, my wife said, and looked at Tony. His gaze moved between the two of us, contemplating what this meant. Well, damn it, Tony said. I'll take the baseball bat, right? No, Tony. No, Louise interrupted him. My dear husband, my husband right here. Well, he was very enthusiastic about our little meeting. And before you even think you're in trouble, you're not. We want something completely different from you, Louise explained. Tony remained silent, trying to figure out where this was going, so Louise continued. For that matter, we want to set some rules. This will not continue unless we all accept them. Rules for what? Tony asked suspiciously. For what might happen, Louise met his gaze, trying to emphasize the significance of what she was talking about. I saw his face change and a satisfied grin appear on it. His tone also changed. Okay, let's go. I think I'm starting to understand. So what are the rules? There are three rules. Rule one, John must be able to say no, and then we stop everything. Rule two, John must be included in the process, so we will need to record this on my phone. I will record us and send the recording to John so that he can see what is happening. And rule three, no direct sex, of course, Louise listed. I looked between Louise and Tony. So what can I do then? Tony asked rudely, showing his nature. She explained everything to him in detail. So, John, is this normal? Louise suggested. And at that moment, she put me in my place. She wanted me to confirm this right in front of Tony so that I would give him permission to pleasure her while he was listening. It probably wasn't on purpose but I ended up in this situation. I felt myself nodding unconsciously. So what do I get for this? Not a very good deal, Tony said rather rudely. I saw Louise hold back an exasperated sigh and roll her eyes. Like I said, she reminded him, but Tony interrupted. What will the neighbors say? I suppose you don't want everyone to know that dear old Mrs. Louise Banks is such an approachable lady. What would they think when I walk across the street and come back half an hour later all disheveled. I don't. So I have a solution, and I have my own rule, he interrupted again. Louise and I exchanged glances. This was not at all what we expected. Come on, I said. I want this once a week, and at least once a month, without this damn phone and other nonsense, Tony demanded. Louise crossed her arms and raised an eyebrow, her face showing clear displeasure. Tony's eyes immediately dropped to her deep cleavage. And you need a plausible excuse. You will be a tutor for me. I have bad grades, and it's no secret. You helping me with P or something, God knows I could use it. Tony laughed loudly, patting his stomach. You know, that's actually not a bad idea, Louise said after a few seconds of silence, unclenching her hands. This way we can invite you during the week, and we will have an alibi. You don't have to worry about what the neighbors will think. Deal. Wait, I said. Once a week, and once a month without a camera, and this idea that he will come on weekdays? We didn't even discuss it. Too late, Tony grinned. Perhaps he was right. Part of my fantasy was for Louise to take control of this. I wanted to lose control, it was part of the game. Is this okay, Johnny? I don't think we can go back now, Louise said essentially siding with Tony. The rule that I could stop what was happening at any time was still in effect, so if something went wrong, I could stop everything. I shrugged and nodded. Deal, I repeated. Tony just sat there grinning, sipping his wine. Louise let him do what only I should have done. In a way, she betrayed me by agreeing to this deal without discussing it with me. But I liked it. After all, I wanted that excitement. Now that she had agreed to the deal, we were committed to having Tony as part of our sex life, even if Louise claimed she was only doing it for my sake. Part of me knew that Tony wouldn't respect our rules or our marriage, that he would try to push the boundaries. But another part of me wanted to see it happen, how she would give in to Tony's wishes despite her own preferences. Of course, I would never dare say it out loud, but it became a tempting reality. I'm not sure if it would be a betrayal because it was what I wanted and I wasn't sure if Louise was doing it on purpose to take control in that way. 
and when will we do it, on schedule or something? Tony asked, clearly eager to get started. Louise turned and stared at him for a moment. She then smirked when she saw my reaction, one of the same curious ones. Since you said once a week, Louise began and paused for a second. Actually, today is Sunday. I think Monday is the perfect day. Tony's eyes sparkled, a smile appearing on his face as he looked from me to my wife and back again. He nodded, grinning wider. Louise filled their glasses and made a toast. We drank it, and then Louise excused herself to go to the bathroom. I watched Tony's eyes roam over my wife's toned body as she walked away. When she was out of sight, Tony looked straight at me. So this is what you do. I swallowed dryly. It's weird, I admitted, watching her with someone else. Ha, as long as I'm the beneficiary, Tony said, grinning at me with a fair amount of smugness. Have you done this before? I asked. He was young, but I was sure there were rumors. Contacted with a married lady? Tony asked, digging around. I can't say yes. No, nothing like Louise. I tried my best not to clench my jaw. If he was trying to make me nervous, it worked. Before I could say anything, my wife returned to the kitchen, ending the conversation. Perhaps it was for the best. Louise put her hand on Tony's shoulder. She was no longer wearing a skirt, just black tights and a comfortable white and red tunic-like garment. Then see you tomorrow, she confirmed. Yeah, he agreed and got up from the table. Louise hugged him politely. However, the hug dragged on. Did I just imagine that the hug lasted longer than usual and my mind made it more vivid? It lasted only a split second, but Louise swatted his hand away. Hands off, mister, she said firmly. Ha ha, tomorrow you will get a lot of my hands. Tony laughed and looked closely at her bulging cleavage. He finally left, saluting my wife with two fingers as he walked out and returned home. Louise had just written her personal report for the day, sitting in an empty classroom. It was a good way to keep track of the progress of various activities throughout the week, as well as noting my own feelings and impressions. She was almost done, only ending with some constructive comments about some of the weaker students. She happened to look out the classroom window as she put the tip of her pen in her mouth to think of something to add. She saw a chubby young man in an oversized sweatshirt walking, all the while looking at his phone, heading towards the building. It was Tony. What was he doing here after the day was over? Louise finished her report, closed her notebook, and put it in her bag. She walked out and saw Tony stopped in the hallway right in front of the office door. He casually leaned against the wall, his phone back in his pocket. What are you doing here? Louise asked, approaching Tony. He looked down at her. She was wearing casual yoga pants and a red shirt, but despite her curvy figure, she was still quite a sight to behold. Louise found it strange that he already seemed a little more impudent and unrestrained than usual. It was just the two of them in this corridor, the bell rang a little earlier, and the rest of the staff had left for the day. What does it look like? I need tutoring, he chuckled. His smile gave away what he meant. Louise couldn't help but worry. She had always been a confident woman, but she didn't know how to cope with Tony's impudence. But a deal is a deal. What would she do to satisfy her Johnny? There's nothing we can do here, Louise said in a whisper, even if no one was around. I know we had a deal, but we can't do things like that here. I could be suspended. Sorry, Tony, she sighed, frowning with regret. Well, okay, I guess we can take care of this in your car. A deal is a deal, and time goes by. I thought about it all day, Tony said. Can't we wait? asked Louise. No, he grinned. I'm ready to go. I won't play football like that. Tony, I don't want to do this at all, Louise sighed. You should have told that to your husband. Now come on, we made a deal. I don't take no for an answer, Tony said, turning around so they could walk. She looked away, feeling cornered. Louise really needed Tony to shut up, but he was right. They made this deal. She silently cursed her husband and his stupid fantasy and replied, Okay, fine, but please... 20 minutes, as you said, no more, and I even do it in the car. No stupid shenanigans. Is it clear?
Yes, yes, go ahead, sexy. Louise couldn't believe she was doing this. She led this door to her car. Luckily, she parked in a fairly secluded spot around the corner. Anyone who comes out won't notice them anyway. However, the consequences if people find out what they are doing here. Twenty minutes Louise mentally reminded herself. You didn't write it down, I asked. I just returned from work and found out that Louise had indeed met our young neighbor. Sorry, I'm not used to this, Louise said, her voice sounding rather unnatural. I wasn't angry, but Louise felt bad. She had essentially broken the rules and thus simply cheated on me instead of following the fantasy. I was just angry that I couldn't see it. How did he feel, I should have asked. Are you seriously asking? You really are just a sick madman, she teased half-heartedly. Yes, I won't make any further excuses. I stumbled. Not on purpose, but still. Louise spent a week no longer thinking about forbidden meetings. Despite everything that was happening at the robot and at the after-school yoga and Pilates club, where she ran with her favorite student and neighbor Lana, Louise found that time flew by quickly. Before she knew it, the next week had already arrived. They didn't really discuss when the next meeting would be or if Monday would be the designated day. Tony didn't even contact her until Tuesday. He wrote, Are you home? When Louise looked at her husband, he just smiled and nodded. This permission was enough. Yes, come. And just like that, Tony entered their house again. Hey, he greeted her as he entered the kitchen. Louise leaned back on the table and smiled politely at him. She wore a white tight shirt and dark blue pants that showed off her amazing physique. Her blonde hair flowed loosely over her shoulders and her plump lips were covered with a thin layer of gloss. How are you? Louise asked, trying to maintain her composure, smile, and not let Tony dominate her thoughts like last time. So you came here for another class, right? Louise asked, feigning shyness. Tony walked up to her at the dining table, completely ignoring Johnny who was standing a little further away in the open kitchen just watching. Louise glanced over at him, smiling shyly at her husband before turning her attention back to Tony and completing another deal. Louise turned to Johnny. Bedroom now. She turned to Tony, giving him a grateful smile. Thanks for. Now go to hell. Tony laughed and quickly got dressed and left the house, giving a cheeky two-finger salute. Finally alone with Johnny, Louise wasted no time. A month passed without any incident. Tony came over once a week. To make their teaching more tutoring-like, the three agreed that they would do some actual college teaching next month. Either the treadmill or Louise helps with weight training, swimming, or whatever. Of course, if something happened, they knew they had to write it down. Oddly enough, Tony was happy to play along, or maybe not so strange, considering the woman in question. New month, new week. Louise hadn't seen Tony since Monday last week, and they hadn't made any plans until Friday, as the pool had been closed until then. They also agreed to do other things in the car after class, just like the first time. However, midweek Louise noticed that he had sent her a message. She had just finished putting the cones back in the equipment shed. Her heart beating fast and her hands shaking, she looked at the message that said, I won't wait for the fourth Friday. Oh God, she muttered. Before Louise could respond, he sent another message. Send photos, please. Kind of a relief. He just wanted photos. At least he was cordial. God, what was Louise thinking? He asked for lewd photos, and she fell for his politeness. She might have felt a little relieved that he didn't ask for anything else. Louise replied, okay, with an embarrassed grin on her face. She already wore tight-fitting clothes. It wasn't a problem. Tony would love to look at her red yoga pants stretched over her cupping ass, not to mention her little crop top that showed off her curves and let her little belly show through. She posted a photo of her butt. She captioned, can't wait for Friday. She knew her emoji game was in full swing. Feeling very brave, Louise took another snap of her ample cleavage, clasping her hands together to highlight it. However, she tried not to show her face. Louise sent the following with a slight ooh sound. She felt so sneaky sending him lewd photos. Jesus, 
She didn't even ask Johnny if it was possible. She immediately felt bad and sent both photos with Johnny's captions. Just send this to you know who, she wrote. She knew she would be forgiven. Voldemort answered her husband. Jerk, she replied. Johnny's jokes were a clear sign that everything was fine. God bless. But did you like it? Hell yes, Johnny replied. Maybe on Friday the camera will always be ready, he added. A smile appeared on Louise's face. Of course, baby, she wrote back. The bell rang, and it was time for the next lesson. Before going inside, she replied to Tony, I hope you like them. I will get more pleasure when I see you naked, you said on Friday, right? He replied. On the terms we agreed on. Louise wrote, Of course, I'm not breaking any rules. He wrote, reassuring her, before adding, Unless you want me to. Immediately after that, a third message came, Just kidding. Louise didn't have time to dwell on this, but his wording alarmed her. On Friday, she had to be especially careful. I can't laugh. Fridays are normal, she quickly typed and went. The last thing she wanted was to encourage him to do something she would later regret, especially since Tony knew a lot about the fantasy they were working with and probably what buttons to push, if any. With Friday just around the corner, the day came quickly and Louise was swimming in her swimsuit, waiting for Tony to join her. The entire pool was theirs since everyone had gone home for the weekend. She took advantage of the Olympic-sized pool since it was much larger and there was no reason for them to get any closer than necessary. Soon Louise stopped. Tony finally left the locker room. Louise couldn't help but watch as he marched across the pool towards her. Louise swam to the edge and climbed out of the water. God, that suit suits you too much, Tony declared, his eyes practically popping out of his head, completely captivated by Louise's curvaceous body. So glad you noticed, Louise replied, smiling slightly at him. But today it's all business. Pleasure can be found after class, too, she grinned. They started the lesson, and Louise kept her promise to focus on her studies. What if Tony keeps complimenting here? He heeded her instructions well enough to not go beyond the border of inappropriate. Moreover, he carried out his training with obvious conviction, which was impressive. Louise was impressed that he took any of her lessons at all, as he wasn't exactly athletic, but rather stocky and overweight for his age and height. If anyone were to ask the coach, most would say that they preferred Tony as their team's fullback as he was a giant and surprisingly agile, blocking tackles if the opposing team was unlucky enough to carry the ball past him. But mostly he tried his best to remain dedicated to his craft, which landed him on the bench season after season. Today this was not a problem. Looking at you definitely motivates me, he joked as Louise praised him on the way to the dressing room. Flattery won't get me in my pants, she replied, already accustomed to Tony. She ignored his usual banter. They stood at the exit, apparently chatting a bit before heading to the shower. I thought we could do it here, Tony said. In the shower at your workplace. My phone. Louise began, but Tony interrupted her. I have one unregistered one a month, Tony reminded her. Those were the rules when she first agreed to do all this with Tony. I can't. Believe we just did this, Louise said in despair. She swore she wouldn't, but she gave in to her dark desires. She broke the most important rule, unfortunately. But now I am not happy at all. Why did you break the rules? She said in a trembling voice. Tony raised his hands up defensively. Hey, you wanted this as much as I did, he objected. To Louise's horror, she knew he was right. But that doesn't change the fact that you... That we. We should do this again, Tony concluded. Louise's eyes flashed and met him. Hey, listen, I'm pretty sure John won't mind. But I object, Louise responded somewhat angrily. It doesn't matter whether he approves or not, I'm a married woman and I'm proud of it. You shouldn't have done that. Okay, okay, Tony softened. I hate that you made me throw all this away. Damn you, Tony. Go ahead, Louise, he replied. You're talking about making love. All we did was have a little fun. Two consenting adults getting their needs met. 
You say it like it's so easy, she spat. It's easy, he said in a soothing voice. Come on, you love John, but you can't deny that you liked it. There's nothing wrong with having a little fun. John will go crazy as soon as you tell him about this. Should I tell him? I can't tell him about this, Louise objected. Of course you can, Tony said. He just wanted it to continue, and for that to happen, it was in his best interest to help Louise overcome her doubts. You must. I, I think you're right, Louise sighed. It made sense. The rules were made to be fair, so fairness was the only way to proceed. No problem, Tony said soothingly. Do you need help with cleaning? I think you need it, Tony teased. God, why do you keep doing this? Louise scolded him, playfully slapping his chest. But she had to admit that after their little conversation, she felt better. Who knew Tony would turn out to be a comforting person? How do you feel? Tony asked seriously. I feel better now, Louise replied, going to start the engine. I'm glad I could help, Tony said. If you're ever in that mood again, you know where to find me. Louise nodded. She was a little nervous that if she was in his company anymore, her resolve would break again. She just couldn't imagine sleeping with a guy like Tony again. It was a mistake, but she still didn't dare start the engine. And Tony noticed this. Unless you want it right now, Tony suggested, leaning closer. He was good, so good. Tony, not here. Please, Louise said. No one will know, he assured her. God, I really hope Johnny is okay, Louise sobbed. Trust me, he will be fine. He's probably at home, thinking about it. And if he's not okay with that, will you let me come over and have sex with you again, said Tony. Yes, she said. She said this, although deep down she wondered how much of the latter was true. Was it just a conversation? Will she be able to stand up to Tony if Johnny says no? Louise wasn't sure she wanted to find out. She had the best sex of her life with Tony, and she knew she would be crushed if John refused to share her. It wasn't right, but she knew she wanted more. She just hoped that she would be strong enough if Johnny decided to pass out. She had a week to find out if she could before her next meeting with Tony. After that night, Louise could not get rid of conflicting feelings. On the one hand, she understood that her actions with Tony went beyond all agreements with Johnny, and on the other hand, she could not deny that she was drawn to these adventures. She wanted to tell Johnny everything, but she was tormented by the thought, what if this ruins their relationship? What if he couldn't forgive her for what happened? Johnny, for his part, felt that his fantasy was out of control. He saw how his wife was carried away by this strange affair with Tony, and although it turned him on, he could not shake off the inner anxiety. He was afraid that all this could lead to the destruction of their marriage. He understood that they had come to a point that could no longer be simply dismissed. One evening, as they sat on the couch, watching a movie, Johnny decided it was time to talk. Louise, I need to talk to you, he said, turning off the TV. She immediately realized that the conversation would be serious, and her heart sank. About what, Johnny? She asked, although she knew the answer. About us. Oh, Tony. I know you went to see him the other day, he began, looking her straight in the eyes. Louise felt a shiver run through her body. She didn't know what to answer. Yes, I went, she admitted quietly, lowering her eyes. How did it go? He asked, trying to remain calm, although everything was seething inside him. Louise sighed and began to speak. She told him everything how she tried to follow the rules at first, but then everything went wrong. She explained that she couldn't help herself, that she was drawn to Tony even though she knew it was wrong. I don't know what's happening to me, Johnny, she finished. I love you, but at that moment everything seemed so right. Johnny was silent for several minutes, pondering her words. His heart was pounding, but he tried not to get emotional. I understand, Louise, he finally said. You let this go too far. Me too. I was too caught up in this fantasy, and now it has grown into something real. But you know what's important? I still love you, and I want us to stop and think about what really matters to us. Louise looked at him with gratitude and relief. She thought Johnny might get angry, but he showed that he was ready to save their relationship. 
I love you too, she said. I don't want to lose you. Then we need to decide what to do next, Johnny continued. Either we put an end to this experiment with Tony, or we set clearer rules and boundaries if you still want to continue. Louise thought about it. She knew that her attraction to Tony was strong, but she also knew that her marriage to Johnny was most important. Let's stop, she said quietly. I don't want to ruin our relationship for something that doesn't have the same value to me. Tony, it was just a temporary hobby, but you are my life. Johnny nodded, feeling finally relieved by his decision. They hugged and both realized that they had gone through a test that could have destroyed them, but they remained together. The next day, Louise met with Tony and directly told him that she no longer wanted to continue their meetings. Tony tried to persuade her, but she was unmoved. She knew she had made the right decision. Over time, Johnny and Louise returned to normal life. Their connection only became stronger, and their experiments in relationships became a thing of the past. They realized that sometimes it is better to stop than to risk losing what is most important. Subscribe to our channel so that your love doesn't cheat on you, and go ahead and listen to the next story, because this story is nothing compared to the next one. If you're under 18, don't even think click to the next one.